Welcome back to another episode of the Outdoor Adventures Hunting Podcast right here on Brownfield. I'm Brent Barnett, and we're joined here this week with Shane Simpson, a hunter from Minnesota. Shane, how's it going here today? Good, good. I'm doing good. Yeah, Thank thanks for making... being here. What's <laughs> that? You. I said I'm making a bunch of owl hooters, so this is a nice little break. <laughs> Definitely. Well, hey, man, um, spring turkey season. I mean, it's right around the corner. Um, what What's the feeling for you? going into another spring season here uh i'm ready to get back out there um i i the end of my season was pretty good the last week i was hunting was you know phenomenal got on a lot of birds you know day after day and i wasn't ready for that to the end and so now i'm anxious to get back out there we've, we've come back around to a new season i'm excited so talk more a little bit about your channel before we kind of dive in further about uh season coming up Tell the list, just remind the listeners a bit about some of the work you do content wise. Uh, okay. So I have my turkey hunting stuff, which I've been dropping some uh, videos left over from our hunts from last spring that I had left over. I've been currently dropping those on my channel. I also do some dog tracking, deer tracking with my dog and uh, record some of those hunts and, or those tracks and post them on my channel and then some deer hunts as well. So uh, mostly pretty much all public land hunting. Um, it's very rare that I'll hunt private, but, uh, that's deer and turkey and deer tracking. That's pretty much it. About how long have you been producing your own video, Shane? Oh gosh. Um, I've been carrying a camera with me since I was like 14. Um, I started my channel, YouTube channel in 2007, I believe, but I didn't actually start putting like, like episodes or like edited video hunt videos, uh, until about 2009. So 2009 would be about the official start of, of my channel as far as putting what I considered um, better quality content. Do you have an idea of your plan for the season coming up? Are you primarily going to stay in your home state or are you looking to travel around a little bit? Uh, initially, I wasn't planning on traveling much other than right here in the Midwest, you know, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska, South Dakota, that sort of that core area there. But um, my daughter's going to a, a new school this year, um, and their spring break is actually at the end of March instead of the beginning of March. And so, you know, I'm originally from South Carolina. I got family down there. We decided to go down there end of March. And I figured, you know, what the heck? I'm going down south. I'll make a, a turkey trip out. So I'm going to go down a week prior and hunt uh, Florida, most likely. And then uh, they'll fly down and meet me in savannah we'll see savannah go to charleston see that do a little family uh, visiting while we're in south carolina and then um, maybe hit alabama and then come back north and the rest of my season will be primarily in the midwest up midwest the only states i've ever hunted in are iowa and missouri how do how do those southern states uh how are they different when it comes to turkey hunting can you maybe talk about that a little bit yeah um so turkey hunting is uh hunters down there there's a lot more diehard turkey hunters down there so you're going to run in in most cases more turkey hunters on private uh, public land and uh, they're going to hunt throughout the entire season whereas in the midwest um you don't have near the enthusiasm for turkey hunting as you do in the south you know and, and then when the fishing season opens say you know, like here in minnesota or wisconsin those guys abandon turkey hunting and go and go fishing so in the late season um, most of the public lands you have all to yourself. So, um, there's, there's that contrast, but, you know, I know they're struggling with Turkey numbers in the South, but there's still, um, good populations down there. It's, it requires a little more effort, I believe, uh, to locate birds and the birds are a lot of times a little more wary because they get pressured more. So, I mean, there's, there's some of the things you have to consider and go down there. Maybe if you're going to take a trip down South plan for a longer stay, then if you were going to go hop across the border to Wisconsin or Iowa, for instance, you may hunt two days there down South, uh, give yourself at least four or five days. You know, it may take that long to get one down there. Why do you think there's such a, a difference when you look at different regions, when you either, if you go out West or in the Midwest or the South, as far as birds being receptive to calling and things like that? Well, the, the, the biggest thing is, is hunting pressure. You know, those birds, um, the seasons come in down there in, in March, a lot of states, uh, or first of April, there's a lot of diehard turkey hunters, like I said. Um, and, and so those birds, 
get the pressure from the day one and and you they get hunting pressure all the way to the end of the season down there um that's that's the biggest thing it's just hunting pressure now here in iowa uh the season the there's four seasons they have season one through four um i'm gonna try to hunt that first season this year i've never hunted that early before for anybody that goes out for that opener early on do you have any tips or strategies as far as um you know the conditions you face and also the lack of cover. Yeah. So yeah, I, I hunted first season in Iowa last year. I'm hunting first season this year in Iowa. Um, last year, I, the, the weather is so finicky or unpredictable that first season, um, you know, later in the season, it the weather pattern, weather patterns seem to stabilize and you get warmer days and leaf cover early season. I'm told in Iowa that it could be snow on the ground. Sometimes uh, this year, that's not going to happen, obviously. <laughs> Um, and last year I had mild weather and, and, and had mild weather, no snow on the ground or anything like that. The birds, uh, were gobbling really good. And, uh, but you know, they were, they were still grouped a little bit. Um, not as bad as I thought it would be. And, you know, when I go into an early season hunt, especially if the birds are still grouped up, you know, they've got the flocks and a gobbler, couple of gobblers together, a bunch of hens, my calling, uh, strategy changes a little bit i usually try to sound like multiple birds depending on each hunt you know if i'm working one-on-one -on -one with one gobbler i may not do that but if i'm working a, a, a larger group of birds i will try to say, sound like a flock myself i'll do some jake yelps and hen yelps you know some key key yelping to sound like a, a jake that's key key yelping maybe even throw a gobble out there if i feel it's necessary so i try to sound like multiple birds when i'm when i'm facing multiple birds and then as I deal with those single birds, I, I, I try to back off that a little bit. It usually works out. One thing that worked out for me last year was I went on a day when the weather conditions were absolutely terrible. Uh, I went during the season two. I want to say it was maybe the 15th or the 16th of April, Shane. And the weather that day was about 30 degrees, sleet and snow mix hitting me in the face. <laughs> and about five to 10 minutes after sunrise, uh, a, a really mature Tom came in by himself. I had a little Jake decoy that I had uh, purchased and came running right into it. And it was a really fast, did, fast did he, hunt. Did he let you know he was coming in? Did he gobble or anything or did he just show oh, up? Oh yeah. He, he was fired up. He was fired up and it actually kind of startled me because I was kind of still hunting my way mm -hmm. at that point. And even though it was that early and um, man, he was already really close on that first gobble kind of rattled me a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so it was kind of a scramble of sticking the, the Jake decoy in the ground and finding a place to set up. And by the time I, I remember by the time I got the gun up on my shooting stick, he was all, I could see his fan already coming through down the, down the path. And I mean, it was, it was one of the fastest hunts I've ever had. So uh, with that, with that said, uh, do you ever have success on those days like that, that maybe it's a, maybe it's a scenario where the, there are some, low temperatures and maybe hunting pressure is down. Could that be a, a, a benefit for hunters? Yeah, I, I guess it could. I mean, I've been out there days where the weather's not great, you know, raining or, or cool and drizzly or something, or there's been, you know, cold and windy days where I've hunted like out West. And, you know, a lot of people sleep in on those days. Um, and I'm awfully tempted to do it, do the same because it's, it, the, my whole, uh, train of thought is I'm out there to enjoy myself and I'm not out there just to kill turkeys left and right, you know, and on those days where the weather is bad, uh, if I'm not having any fun, I don't want to just go out there just to kill something. So some of those days I will skip, I will take the time to, you know, catch up on editing, you know, recharge my camera batteries or my personal, you know, my body's battery. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you, you can get on, you know, like in your instance, the birds are still going to do their thing thing a lot of times, but uh, I guess it, for me personally, I have a lot of time to hunt, you know, I'm off uh, several days each week just because of my work schedule. And so it you know, affords me the, the decision to skip days sometimes. And, uh, you know, especially if I've killed several birds already, I'm not so gun ho gun, gun ho about it, but you know, if I travel out of state, like, I went out west one time and the weather just turned to it was nasty um i'm gonna get out there and hunt because you know it's day one out there and i've got limited days so um yeah 
I, I'll, I'll just tell you, it felt pretty good to uh, put the tag around that one because I was on about a four or five year dry spell there uh, <laughs> yeah. without success. So that that was nice. Hopefully, you can have a, a repeat. So that's a, that's a reason I would have got out in that nasty weather if I was having you know one of those instances where I a, a dry period. Uh, I would be out there in every type of weather, you know, that can be dished out to us. Yeah, definitely. So do you find that birds uh, are more aggressive or receptive to calling in those early seasons? Or do you try to target those later seasons like in early May, Shane? Well, I, I try to hunt all season. As soon as, you know, okay. if, you know, like Florida comes in early and, and I used to go there at just about every year or Mississippi and, you know, we got this new app we launched last fall, that tracker app. And so I haven't been traveling quite as much, but I look at my schedule. I'm not concerned about which states I hunt. I look at what states are open and where can I get to in a reasonable amount of time to drive to. Um, I've, I've seen them early season, you know, be you know fired up and easy to call in. And I've seen them where they're, they're, they're trouble, you know, they're difficult to call in. And I've seen the same thing in the late season, late season. I, Actually, late season is one of my favorite times to hunt. It seems like those birds, a lot of times, you know, will come into the call. Sometimes you have to work with them a little bit, um, but you can you can see both ends of the spectrums on both ends of the season. Are you going to break out the recurve this year? Yep, that is my plan. I, last time I shot one, well, the only one I shot with the recurve was a Miriam's, and uh, my goal the past couple seasons was to get one an eastern wild turkey with my recurve and I, I just didn't pull the trigger on purchasing the tag and, and committing to it this year i've committed to in minnesota because we can buy you have to buy a weapon specific tag i'm gonna buy an archery tag and i get to hunt the entire season in minnesota instead of the broken up with a firearm you have to pick a week to hunt um but anyway i'm gonna I'm going to dedicate to trying to get a Eastern here in Minnesota on public land without a blind, without a decoy, just try to make it as difficult as possible. And, and that's for personal reasons. I just, I want to challenge myself and to see if I can do it. Before we go here, um, we got a few minutes left last year. We had you on the show and you were unveiling and you already referenced it. The new tracker app that was uh, going on through the fall deer season. And so Shane, Curious if you have an update, how the, the app went for year one, and do you have any results or data you can share from it at this point? Yeah, so it uh, it went went really well. Um, you know, probably not as well as mentally I was hoping for, but it was well received, especially in the northern half of the country. And it was received well in a lot of, you know, even in the south. The problem down south is everyone down there seems to have a dog that'll track a deer, and so the they didn't use the app as much as they did say in Minnesota and, and New York state and Pennsylvania. Um, we have a lot of new features coming out uh, over the, during the summer. We're going to be adding to it. We're going to add um, the drone deer recovery um, teams to the app. So if you, if you need a tracking team you can decide whether you want your request to go out to dogs or drones or both. Um, we have a lot of data we already collected last season through the app. And people can go check that out on the on the app itself. Download the tracker app, and you can look at our analytics. And it's it's just some basic analytics right now, like for deer, you know, um, what kind of weapon was shot with, mechanicals and fixed uh, broadheads, firearms, you know, that sort of thing. But we're going to expand that quite a bit with all the data we're collecting. And if anyone's interested in seeing that, they can just hop on the app. And now there is that is a paywall to see that, and that's how we're hoping to continue funding the app to improve it going forward now with managing the app are you still taking up tracks yourself yeah but i didn't do very many last last fall because i set this computer um for like you know 12 to 15 hours a day vetting trackers that signed up for it and i have a, a bunch that have signed up for the app since uh deer season ended and we're working with some other state uh groups tracking groups um and they're gonna i think help really blow this app up for next fall but i i just haven't had time to to go through and vet those trackers and approve them so it's right now it's on kind of on hold right now especially with turkey season i'm like i mentioned before we got on this call i was making owl hooters or at the beginning of this call um i'm making owl hooters for um hooks calls which i pro staff for and and i'm making my own turkey calls that i sell <laughs> and so i've been sitting at this 
the desk behind me every day. Make I was making owl hooters right before we got on this call. I was making turkey calls all day yesterday. So um, we'll get back into working on the app and improving trackers. And like I said, we're going to have a lot of improvements coming up. Sounds great. Hey, Shane, again, how can uh, listeners and viewers stay connected with your content? So they can find me on YouTube. Just look up Shane Simpson hunting, or you can go to my website, shanesimpsonhunting.com. And there's links to my YouTube channel there. You can find me on TikTok. A lot of people uh, seem to like the TikToks I put up. But, um, and I, I enjoy uh, seeing videos on TikTok. I know that it gets a lot. Uh, some people give it a, don't really care for it, but <laughs> it's fun. Um, I'm on Instagram too and, and Facebook. So if, if, you want to, if you want to look at the, the hunting stuff, just YouTube's a good, good resource. Hey, man, always good to catch up. Thanks a lot for coming on our show. Yeah, man, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Again, that's Shane Simpson right here on the Outdoor Adventures Hunting Podcast from Brownfield. I'm Brent Barnett. Thanks for watching this week.